Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for mon Monday, March 23rd, 2015. It's a little past 7.15, and I do call this meeting to order. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that ACMI is filming us tonight, so uh, please smile widely when at the microphone. Um, we'll jump right into it with a, a discussion of the Cable Advisory Committee status report. Uh, John Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, glad to be here. Um, I wish I, I, in preface, let me just say how much I miss coming to selectmen's meetings. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's just like old times, and it reminds me of the pleasure that I derived from uh, meeting with this August board. But did you forget the dress code, Mr. Meyer? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last time I was here, I was the one with the suit, and Mr. Raguili informed me that I didn't get the uh, casual dress memo. And now, I, I, if I was, if I, if I get embarrassed, I would have been embarrassed, but I, I never get embarrassed. So, uh, genius, whether you're in jeans or a suit, sir. Uh, Massachusetts and federal law requires you, as licensing authority, to uh, have a uh, ascertainment hearing uh, after. Consultation with the manager and with the, your chair, we've determined that April 15th will be the date of that meeting. It will be held in the, here in the town hall. Uh, our outside counsel, very capable gentleman by the name of Peter Repstein, has put together a proposed agenda which will be circulated to you prior to that hearing, but I have it here tonight, and I'll just briefly outline what will be covered at that, meet, uh, at that meeting. First off, we have, with the capable assistance of um, Marianne and Marie in your office, we have uh, made uh, sure to post the notice uh, in the, or, or publish the notice in the Arlington Advocate in the next successive two-week editions. Uh, we have also posted the notice on the web, town website. ACMI is putting it on, uh, using it, putting it on their facilities available to them as far as the notice on the uh, bulletin board and so forth. We have sent letters to all uh, prospective uh, stakeholders, including school committees, superintendent of schools, the chamber, uh, the cable companies, and other interested parties. The first item of business, obviously, will be uh, introduction by the chair at that time, and then you, the board, as licensing authority, will hear testimony from various uh, parties, including uh, cable advisory committee, uh, ACMI. Uh, First off, uh, any citizen input, and as the chairman will announce, is <coughs> per the uh, uh, agenda item uh, that uh, public's comments are welcome, both written and testimonial, at that meeting, and the record will be kept open for some time. It will be clear, made clear, though, that rates uh, of pay from each of the cable uh, companies is not something that is within the purview of the licensing authority, nor the programming, but we anticipate hopefully uh, a good turnout and we look forward to <coughs> everyone's comments. Just to refresh your memory, the <coughs> various cable contracts expire. Uh, Comcast in July of 2016, RCN in uh, September of 2016, and Verizon in March of 2017. It sounds like we're way ahead of the curve here, but we're actually not. Uh, we have to leave time for adequate uh, uh, negotiations, which can, has in the past, can be, shall we say, uh, uh, the, um, the site of vigorous and frank exchanges, uh, sometimes contentious. But uh, we're prepared, uh, I think, uh, and we'll be meeting with you again prior to those negotiation process going forward to talk about strategy and what the town would like to see is uh, in the renewals of the various licenses. So with that, I'm glad to respond to any questions. I know you have a full agenda, but uh, again, I'm pleased to be here and just to bring you quickly up to date. Also, by the way, we have met with uh, ACMI, uh, Adam and I, uh, in uh, late, the late fall. We're meeting again with them this coming Thursday uh, so that the town is uh, in sync with them with regard to those items that they'd like to see included. But as you know, they're the principal beneficiary of the cable licensing 5%. So we're, look, hand, we're working hand in hand with them. In furtherance of that, Adam and I ha asked uh, ACMI to put together a, uh, a booklet about uh, their needs going forward. And you, I think you have those in front of mm -hmm. you. I asked that they be dropped off. Uh, just, uh, I just got mine today. I have spent a little bit of time on them. It looks to be extremely impressive. 
publication. And again, uh, we'll be working hand in hand with the ACMI going forward <coughs> in our negotiation process. At some point, as I say, we'll be back before you to talk about strategy and talking to you each individually um, so we, we can formulate what that strategy is going to be. So uh, if there are any questions, I'm glad to respond. Otherwise, it's nice to see you all. Thank you very much, uh, John. This is one of these committees that you know, I think not a lot of people really think about, but it's quite important um, for the town. So I do thank, thank you for your work on that. But um, questions from the board, Dan? Just could you repeat that? What day again are we doing it? I'm sorry. What day again? April fifteenth, which I think it's is a Wednesday. A Wednesday? Yes. Further questions? Uh -huh. Diane. This may not be appropriate, but I'm taking advantage of the opportunity, and it's something that we've discussed with the town manager. Um, at some point, if working with ACMI, we can get the selectmen's meetings, some of the technology that the school committee has in terms of, like when we give PowerPoint presentations, we have to show them on the chalkboard, and it's really difficult when the camera tries to pick it up. Um, and I do know the technology that the school committee has, which I am happy that they have it, their PowerPoints can get fed right into cable and be shown, or, and they also have a different kind of screen. And I said, and have spoken with the town manager, you know, I'm amenable to if, you know, for some reason we have to move this side over to that side and, you know, to put the screen up there. But, but uh, I'm not sure this is the appropriate venue, but I figure I'd put, <coughs> put it with, present it to you since you are discussing sure. with ACMI, along with the town manager that, you know, if that could be maybe this year's to-do list that we can just get kind of up to speed with the technology. We're, you know, we're, we're doing everything else that we can to, to take uh, full advantage of That's the of point it. We'll, we'll raise with uh, ACMI on Thursday. Thank you. Mr. Rauch. Mr. Greeley. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> another concern I'd like you to bring up, I don't feel I'm on screen enough. Would it be possible to increase my exposure uh, <laughs> during these meetings, like a separate camera? Um, I think we could probably work something else, so we just train it on you, Kevin, for the entire, <laughs> we'll have two cameras, one on you so and the I rest, I should I mean, be on, the rest on everybody really else. Uh, but the 15th is just for the ACMI, correct? I'm sorry? The, uh, the 15th hearing is just ACMI. Oh, no, 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 it's the general public. Okay. The, the law requires us to ask the general public on two points. One is, uh, you know, what do you consider the performance of the various cable companies? And what are the town needs as far as both the town side, school side, and the public? What would they like to see? How can cable be improved? <clears throat> and again, it can't be about rates. It can't be about programming. But there are other things uh, that certainly can be addressed. And we've had, the last hearing we had was uh, you know, over about you know, 12, 13 years ago. And I remember we had quite a bit of input from the public. So it's the general public, ACMI. Uh, and any uh, any other uh, interested individuals who want to be heard. No, no, but is it Verizon also? Is it the Verizon? Oh, it is. Comcast okay. Okay. and yeah. RCN all, right. all are invited. We're a little bit fortunate because have we have three uh, cable companies and all of the licenses expire about within a year of each other. So we're only going to have one ascertainment hearing uh, rather than having three for each of the providers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to say, first off, <coughs> Attorney Marr has really done, put a yeoman's effort into leading this charge, so I want to thank him for his work to date. Uh, but to be brief, if you're watching this at home or you're going to eventually watch this streaming and you think that's valuable, come to this hearing and state that ACMI and the services it provides is valuable. Thank you very much. So further discussion? Seeing none. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, consent agenda. We have the minutes of meeting of uh, March 9th, 2015. We have the appointment of new election workers. Aroxy Mersopian, uh, Evelyn Lewis, and Carol Phillips. Move approval. We have a motion. Can you, um, I'd like to abstain on the minutes. Can we take them separately? Uh, yes, yes, we, of chair? course we can. Okay. Um, so first motion on uh, minutes of meetings, Second. March 9th. We need a motion on it. I oh, think I, thought, I thought you were Kevin. Uh, I think that's what Mr. Greeley was moving, all right? Well, I moved on the election worker appointment. Oh, okay. I apologize. Oh, okay. I'll um, move on the minutes. Second, sorry. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Thank you. Thank and um, you. a motion on number three? 
So move approval on the three election workers. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Are they here, Mr. Chairman? The new election workers here? Okay. Nope. Um, moving on, license and permits. We have a request for a common victualler for Maria's Pizzeria. Um, Rosanna, please come to the microphone. Good evening. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your plans for the restaurant, et cetera. Uh, good evening, board members. <clears throat> My name is Emmanuel Maymaris. I'm the attorney representing Rosanna Zakarian and uh, her corporation, Pizzeria Maria Inc., in her quest to uh, acquire the pizzeria at 86 Mass Ave in Arlington uh, from the current owner. Um, she comes with a background of about 14 years of experience, having worked in uh, a couple of places, um, similar in size and uh, work as Maria's Pizzeria currently offers. The plan is to keep the establishment as it is right now. The menu is going to stay the same. The hours of operation are going to stay the same. The, I think a couple of employees are going to stay on for a while until she gets the hang of uh, the business. Um, she has uh, worked and continues to work right now in a, uh, a lunch establishment that serves American deli type food. And uh, previously to that was working in a breakfast place. Uh, right now she's in Watertown at 40's Falafel and Deli, and previously she was at Heidi's Restaurant in Waltham. Um, she has a wealth of experience in this field, and she is also, it's gonna be like a family operation. Her sister-in-law is gonna be very much involved in the day-to-day -day operations as manager. And um, what else can I mention? There is a current license to have outdoor seating <coughs> uh, and chairs, I think three tables and six chairs outside during the summertime where they put up umbrellas and we are hoping that license continues with uh, uh, to be transferred to the new owners. Thank you very much. Um, and, and the vendors are going to stay the same too. Awesome. Uh, questions or comments from the board? Diane. Uh, I just actually, um, to Mrs. Sullivan or perhaps town council through you, I, and this is move approval on this uh, application, it's just sort exactly. of a housekeeping thing. Um, I see that down in the application we have seating capacity, which is for inside. Should we have something on this for establishments that do have outside seating that they can also put that on, or is that just something that's not needed? Uh, no, we definitely could. We have actually been working um, with Adam Karelski on developing a new common victualler. Uh, so we could easily do that. Oh, if you could just discuss it and then you all, it was just, it has nothing to do with the application. It just happened to catch my eye. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for choosing Arlington for your business. Um, samples of your food <laughs> tonight? No. Forthcoming. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to go on blind faith, but I support it and thank you very much for being thank here. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further comments? Seeing none. Uh, comments from the crowd? Seeing none, um, so we have a motion and a second, and um, I'll echo Kevin's comments. Um, congratulations, and thank you very much. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Moving forward, um, the discussion and adoption of um, Hackney policy insurance requirements. Um, this is an issue. We discussed, um, oh, it must have been last month or a few meetings ago, and um, we asked to um, hold, push it off until we could get some input from um, the taxi drivers that uh, operate in Arlington. And I think I see many of them here tonight, and uh, we did receive um, written comments as well. Um, but before I um, get into discussion and ask, uh, the board for further discussion. I, I think that as of right now, you know, I think um, with the plan stated, this the industry seems to be uh, pretty dynamic right now. There's quite a few um, things going on at the state level that I would be comfortable um, waiting to implement these changes until we see what those um, changes at the state level are. I think um, we have to, uh, you know, this 
it's uh, tricky. We don't know what the regulations for the ride sharing will be. And, you know, I think that it might be prudent to um, put this off until that time comes. But with that being said, I'm happy to uh, get into the discussion with the board. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chair, a question to you. What is the status of House Bill 854? It's before so, them now, you know, or? I don't think, um, you know, I don't have a, um, any comments on the status of this bill 854, uh -huh. but I know that um, I think that we'll see movement on, if not 854, very, um, you know, I don't know, want to call it similar language, but I anticipate this issue being a priority that is um, discussed forthwith. Um, and I think that um, you'll see some action on this in the near future. And I think that, you know, listening to the discussion both, um, you know, I think in the city of Boston and in um, at the State House that they're, um, this is on the top of their priority list and um, they realize that regulations um, will be necessary for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Joe. So as I, I look at this, I mean, it looks like actually what the House is anticipating is actually greater than what, what we have in, in front of us as a, as a proposal, except for the, the property and medical portions of it. Is that the state of it, the bill, as you currently understand it? Um, so I don't want to um, I don't want to be speaking as someone who knows exactly what's yeah. going to happen. Um, and I think that the committee will probably take up a, you know, if not this bill, a, a similar um, piece of legislation mm -hmm. that focuses. Um, you know, I don't know if it will be this exact language, but I think that there will be some sort of uh, regulations put forth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further, Diana. And, and just to put on the table, um, what I'm leaning, the position I'm coming from right now is that, um, and we've had discussions at previous meetings with town council and, and the selectman's office amongst ourselves, that um, I would like to set um, the 100, 300,000 um, rate, um, we discussed previously that if the state comes out with different recommendations and we think they're better, we, you know, we can adopt them. Um, only because this, this has been discussed at the state house, but I think the Uber talks have really um, dominated and kind of sidetracked everything. And um, we began this discussion uh, about about a year, about 15 months ago, when the Globe came out with the spotlight on the city of Boston. Um, and it is noted that you know New York City and uh, Los Angeles have the 100, 300,000. That's the lowest, and then I think Chicago and Dallas were 300 and 500 for personal, and then um, triple that for property. Um, so, so I'm sort of the position that, you know, it's been like 15, 16 months now. Um, I'd like to set something, um, but I do want to hear from the Hackney taxi owners um, their thoughts on that, as well as if and when we did make any changes, um, if there's a, you know, more appropriate time that works for everybody through the selectman's office as well as people, the Hackney owners, in terms of best transition. But I'd kind of like to, um, and, and I don't mind waiting. I'm not, you know, going to stomp my feet and, and be really angry and upset, but I just feel like we've waited so long. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm of that position, but I want to hear what everyone else has to say. Excellent. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so um, I think that's where um, we understand where you know, there's a divide between the board on this, and um, I think that we um, look forward to hearing uh, from everyone in the crowd. So please, um, if we, I guess we'll just take it in order. If um, there, anyone who wants to speak on this will line up um, behind the microphone, and we'll do it that way. How you doing? Good evening. Uh, Tom Whalen, owner and operator of uh, Arlington Veterans Taxi. Um, I have had got my first license, I think it was in 95, somewhere around there, and I picked up the second license here a couple of years ago. Uh, <clears throat> when I got, got the letter here, it's the first time I heard about it, so I really didn't have time to check in a lot, but I did check with my insurance company, and um, first they told me that my insurance company, which is Arabella, does, will not cover the higher rates. They don't cover them. And most uh, cabs in the state of Massachusetts cover that basic 
what we have right now. Um, and my rates would basically double from what they are. Uh, I heard the board talking about the state and all the stuff that's going on in there, but that's Uber. That's not taxi cabs. Um, taxi cabs are different. We, you know, we already regulated. Um, we were here a couple years ago when the, all the licenses were opened up, and um, I know a couple of uh, taxi people. We we didn't like it because it, we just the business is not there for all these cabs. We, I can't even get my cabs on the stand during the morning sometimes. Um, with Uber and all this other stuff, it just seems like, again, it's the cabs that are coming down, you know, the people, we're heavy rate regulated, we have to have proof of, you know, all our stuff. It just seems like, uh, here we go again. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, this is basically all I have to say. I just think, uh, I hope the board will really think about um, what you're going to do if you do it and give it as much time as possible uh, and do some, you know, check around and, and just see what the other towns are doing. I'm, like I say, from what I've gathered, this is ba that's the basic coverage for the I mean, Boston does business like that. Lowell, Lawrence, all these, they all do the same, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have questions for Ms. Whalen? I do. Yes, Dan. Hi. Uh, so one of, thank you for coming and talking to us. Uh, one of the, uh, emails that we got from one of the other cabs insurance companies specifically had a problem. So in the recommendation there's talked about the personal property, the accident, uh, the property, the medical payments. And the, 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 the email that we got said that the had a particular problem with the medical payments. Right. Okay. They won't even cover my, I don't even, t she told me that this new insurance company that I would have to get, because Arabella won't cover it, won't even cover that. That's something else I'd have to get. So else. I don't even know where I get it. So that one, um, that one to me was uh, that email was uh, very informative for me. So I'm definitely uh, the, the medical payment. I'm definitely very concerned about. Is there a, so? But beyond the, tw I, I will also say that the 2040 number seems surprisingly low. Like it just doesn't seem. And so I was curious if there was. Is, so is there a number there that you think that makes sense or is it you know is there any movement or like so the medical payment i'm i definitely i get the message and i understand personally i, I don't know the rest of the board I, I hear that one but the 2040 i'm similarly wondering if there's somewhere that would be in a more appropriate number well like i say i never i just go by i take my stuff up to my agent she tells me what we gotta have and that's you know that's what i go by i mean okay. Just like any other business, you want to have your, you know, your overhead as low as possible. I mean, okay. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Further questions, Ms. Um, I have a question. I'm not sure if I can ask it, and if you don't want to answer it, that's fine. I'm just trying to think of if there is any transition. Is it appropriate if I ask, like, when? Like, I know my husband. Every year at a certain time, we have renewals whether it's life insurance, health insurance. Is it appropriate for me to even ask um, the gentleman when he renews his, goes to the insurance company every year? My, uh, I mean, unless you feel comfortable answering. I'm, I'm just trying to think in my head in terms of, you know. Mine runs out, at, I'm like halfway through. Mine runs out in November every year. November of the, right. okay, thank you. Thank you for answering. discussions for, I mean, further questions? Yeah, I, yes. I had one more question. S similar to Dan's, I mean, one other thing that I flagged here is that, that um, we're asking for proof of registration on the certificate and, and um, correspondence we received from one of the other operators said that the insurance agents are not able to provide that. I thought we already had that. Mm. Yeah. We do. Yes. We do. We do currently get that, yes. On the certificate, okay. We, we, we do require that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion from the audience? Mr. Chairman, Honorable Board. Marianne. Good evening, Tom. I think the correspondence that you're talking about, Dan, is for me. I think so, too. And, um, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have on what was emailed, and then I have a follow-up. But for you, Mr. Dunn, 
need this back. I believe so. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of this research uh, has uh, come out of the commissioner's office. And are there any questions on that email? Questions from the board. Dan. Uh, I was just going to ask at some point the same question that I asked Mr. Whalen, which is, uh, so you give understanding that the medical payment is significantly different. Medical payments uh, are impossible. There's excess there, limits. Sir, I, let me, I'm just saying, understanding <laughs> that, <they're, laughs> that they don't make sense. Is there a number on the other two that does make sense? Uh, does, you can answer it in the course of. Again, Mr. Dunn, All right. we don't set those rates. They come out of the uh, State Rating Bureau, they come out of the Commissioner's Office, uh, and they come out of uh, um, CAR, Commonwealth Automobile Reassurers. They set the rate, and I understand they had a meeting on March 10th to raise those rates, and uh, that's not going to happen. However, um, I think I think if you have no more questions on what I sent to you, uh, I drew something up in conclusion, and then maybe you can ask some questions. You might, the board might be able to understand a few things, if it's okay. I think that we'd take prefer a seven to minutes. hear a presentation and then we'll ask questions. Pardon? We'd prefer to hear your presentation and well, then the ask questions. Well, the presentation went uh, to, you, to each and every one of you via email. Well, didn't you just say you had concluding remarks? Well, I do, uh, but there's no questions being asked on the uh, presentation. Further, yes. I'll try again then. So I understand that you don't set the rate, but the the, the limits that we're current that are under our current policy that the requirement is uh, twenty thousand, forty thousand, right? That's state state mandated. Right, and so it's state mandated and echoed in our policy. Yes. And so one of the uh, there there has been talk on the state house of, of raising that twenty forty to hundred slash three hundred. Yes. And there's something that we sent in a memo that we were considering doing fifty to one hundred. Yes. And so. Uh, and the, the, the response that you, in your presentation, spent, talked a lot about the medical payment, and that message has been uh, received. But I haven't heard an argument about why 2040 is preferable to, say, 5100 or 100, 300. Well, please be advised that I am not an insurance man. I only know what I was taught in the last 45 years in this business. What happens is, when you ask for excess limits on taxi cabs, those excess limits can be provided through the Assigned Risk Bureau, of which there are only two companies that will write those limits, which is safety and pilgrim. However, um, anything over and above the bodily liability, they have their own reasons, we would have to leave the Commonwealth and get the excess limits in another, in another state. And it would be written out of the manual. So an experience modification would not help that situation. And Mr. Chairman, a lot of those questions that Mr. Dunn's asking me are in <coughs> my, my minutes. And uh, maybe it'll, it'll be a bit clearer. Thank you. Because I'm not totally familiar with uh, these answers. And I get nervous under a camera. And uh, if I misspell something or say something wrong, I don't want it held against me. OK. Do you have a question on that? Um, I'd like to ask the same question I asked the previous gentleman. If you happen to know. Um, when your liability insurance is up yes. for renewal? Yes. In some cases, uh, they're fiscal, fiscal and some are annual. It depends upon when you first sign on. So it's either July of this year or December of this Not year? Not necessarily. It could be it could, uh, a, a policy can run from February to February or March to March. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, could, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Dunn and I, we've had a little uh, uh, communication, and I'd like to clear that up with him, if I may. Are you okay with that, Dan? Uh, I'm certainly okay with it. Um, um, it, it has to, I mean, I'm sure it has to do with the, it, the email described a car accident that one of his cars had with an Uber driver. 
And uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm not sure it okay. affects our rate, this, uh, but if, I'm sure it affects this, but I have certainly no problem talking about it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dunn, that loss happened on February 4th, and I believe the date of the uh, denial was the 23rd. T on that particular date, we did not know why it was denied. We called the senior claims adjuster, and they <coughs> simply said that it was canceled for non-payment. That, and then, thank you for your time in uh, educating me about uh, a company regarding Uber. Now, at the time, I did not know it was an Uber driver or a, uh, a Lyft driver or a side sidecar, I believe they call it. And it's to my understanding that every one of these individuals out there have these ind individual taxi apps, and they're working for all three. However, we did discover that that passenger that was in their vehicle, who was in the front seat, by the way, and uh, we were deemed no fault by the Arlington Police Department. We had the vehicle towed. We had to pay the gate fee and the gate fee out. Finally, um, we did get our Bella to come out. Our, our Bella deemed the vehicle totaled. So obviously, because we it's just tying the thing up, we, we got rid of the, the vehicle. But this brings me to what's really going on in our community. And we have people who will go out and hire a passenger plate. So like you guys put your vehicles on. I'll tell you, a lot of this is in my minutes because they spent a lot of time, and I think it'll be very clear if, if I'm allowed. What, Mr. Uh, Chairman, what? if I'm, I'm allowed to read my closing. Yes, please. All sir. right, thank you. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak on the insurance issue. The bottom line is taxis are regulated by, the, by this board in conjunction with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. A taxi plate means a taxi. The insurance to operate is extremely expensive for the mandated limits, which are 2045, that are currently compulsory. If you bought those limits in, in North Carolina or out in Seattle or someplace else, those limits would be a lot less, but there's only two companies that write taxis voluntarily in the Commonwealth. So they kind of have us under their gun. Any increased coverage would have to come from the pool. That's the assigned risk bureau. Plus out of state coverage for the excess limits because anything, it's mandated, it's 2040. In my case, we carry extra property damage in case we do get involved. You never know, you'd hit a Mercedes or something. Um, that will double our existing premium. Blanket coverage is totally unavailable for taxis. Therefore, in consideration of the board, please know that the increased premium cost would be reflected in the meter rate. So if you, <laughs> we'd have to raise the rates. We don't want to, in fact, uh, in our last meetings of 2012, um, we haven't raised our rate. Uh, in consideration of the board, please know that the increased premium cost would be reflected in the meter rate, and there is no need for additional coverage as we are not contractual. This would have an impact on the seniors, their families, and the community. The already existing insurance coverage is the same mandatory rates in all cities and towns including the city of Boston, Brookline, Cambridge, Somerville, and Waltham, to mention a few. Note for the city of Boston, the compulsory rate averages around $10,000 annually for those same lower mandated <coughs> rates. So 2045 cost a Boston cab driver near $10,000. And that's um, with a, with a um, written in voluntarily out of the poll, but if he's on the merit system, those numbers could they could jump. Compulsory mandated coverages for those drivers with an excellent merit rating, a driver with bad experience would be facilitated in the pool, the assigned risk bureau, and said rates would be considerably higher. The board needs to be clear. <clears throat> a passenger plate, your vehicles, my vehicle, and or delivery plate, the premium is far less and excess coverage is available for the non-regulated motoring public 
and livery carriers. The non-taxi plate with increased bodily injury, property damage coverage comes with a lower premium cost because it's a non-taxi. Is he getting clear? The passenger and the liveries are not mandated by regulation. Therefore, not a level playing field. Please know that the Commonwealth Automobile Reassure is known as CAR as the ruling govern governance of what is a livery and what is a taxi. The ruling is as follows. A taxi is a call and pick up on demand. This is coming from the Commonwealth. A livery is a reservation and no will call on demand. Livery, the term livery comes from the stables up in the heights, the old milk dairy uh, where um, they um, <coughs> had a horse and carriage and they were allowed to take somebody to a wedding in town down in the center and every, every town, you know, had that. But, uh, and, and for funerals. But according to the, the regulations, that livery needs a phone call as a reservation it can do what it's hired to do, but it must return to the barn and not leave for two hours, which is totally being abused. <clears throat> After clearing the livery must return to its place of garage and wait for the next move for a period of two hours, this rule is being totally ignored. Mandates. We must adhere by the board's rules as to affix a taxi plate and pay the high taxi premium for our units if not, our licenses will be suspended by this board. As we would be in violation, we must have a meter in the unit as to measure costs. We must license our drivers and the driver, driver training programs, et cetera, and comply with the Arlington Police Department in conjunction with the board's rules of governing. We have for over 40 years adhered to those rules without an infraction. However, we are Completing with the likes, competing with the likes of gypsy cabs, tax apps, taxi apps that have no taxi plate and are not paying the taxi premium and are doing taxi work. It's a catch-22. The exact same duties as we, without regulation, they do have, and I have to bring them in because they're a part of the problem. The exact same duties as we, without regulation, they do not have any rulings whatsoever they are allowed to pick up in our community without complying with the board's rules and regulations. They have drivers who are not quarried as the taxi app driver, and I know Dan will give me an argument on that, but I'll get to that in a minute. They have drivers who are not quarried as the taxi app driver application only describes that driver of said applicant. However, does not describe the next driver and or the next shift who uses the applicant's pre-approved communication with the app carrier's connection. The individual's account, the public has no idea of who is driving them. Currently, local and state police are inv investigating rapes and robberies that have been televised, that I'm sure the board is familiar with, with no actual arrest. This is an unfair playing field, but we must abide. <clears throat> Overcharging. We cannot charge a premium surcharge. If so, we would be in violation of the said rules of this board and penalized. But the app carriers can. It's published. An example, a late Friday night with inclement weather, Uber, Skylift, and Sidecar can have charged a premium or a surcharge on top of the premium surcharge. Let me give you an example. And we tested it. There has been public complaints regarding price gouging from the taxi apps. We're all, we're all aware of that. Sir, is this going to get back it's to the insurance done. part of it? We're almost done. Another example, they will not do any work in town. This is where the insurance comes in. Do you, uh, Mr. Chairman, what I'm trying to explain to you is when they're using a passenger plate and putting on 100, 300, 100,000 property damage, they can do that. They can do that for, for between 800 and 1,200 dollars. We, because we're mandated by your board, we, we can only get 20, 40, 50, and it costs in the city of Boston $10,000. And I'm trying to explain why they're getting away with that in this community. 
And I'm almost that, that's there. That's not really the issue that oh, we're... Oh, it is. Not, it is. Not please, in my mind. Please, Mr. Chairman, will you let me finish? Well, please do, yes, but you're going in a very roundabout way. Okay, so I'll get to the point. We are not a contractual vendor. We represent the licensing board of this community and are subject to carry the Commonwealth's mandatory compulsory insurance rates. Higher rates are unaffordable and can be unobtainable. We have an average of three losses a year, minor fender benders. If we were there to incur a major liability, bodily injury loss, the loss would be impacted upon us. And I'm, I'm going to close one more paragraph. It's been brought to our attention there are lawsuits going on in the city of Boston, taxi divisions, as well as other communities for not enforcing their own rules and regulations, as well as selective enforcement and spot zoning. The taxi industry and its agents have hired a lobbying group as well as, as um, uh, legal teams and actuaries to compensate for the insurance increases, and sidecar, and sidecar are taxis doing its work. With no taxi insurance, nor are they required to be burdened with the high taxi premiums for compulsory coverage because they do not have taxi plates. One, one more paragraph here, sir. I know. <clears throat> Try writing it. Please know there are currently current meetings going on at the state level in conjunction. You just meant to mention the House bill number. And the Insurance Commission, the State Rating Bureau, Commonwealth of Mass, reinsures known as CAR. The Attorney General and Governor's Office, we have been informed that decisions on regulation, insurance and otherwise, et cetera, is getting close. Um, we are on the list, according to the Commonwealth of Mass, Chapter 159A and 160B of the DPU for the results of, of such hearings. There are inquiries and discussions with the Insurance Commissioner's Office, State Rating Bureau, Governor's Office, as well as the Attorney General's Office. We will be notified of that clarity and will inform this Board of those results. There are many other issues that we have on our agenda regarding the taxis in Arlington that need to be addressed and discussed with this Board. Our business dropped over 50 percent so, since our last meetings of 2012. I would like to discuss these issues with the town in a closed session as there is just too much at hand to get into those matters this evening. We are requesting that the board delay the insurance increase and thank you that you did and on the liability and property damage until we receive clarity from the Commonwealth, Commonwealth's governing authority, respectfully, Arlington Taxi. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Much. Chairman. Questions, further questions? Seeing none. Oh, sorry. Oh, Excuse yes. It's not a question, it's a comment. So I do agree that there are, I'm always happy to talk about ways that, that these rules can be improved. Uh, but I will say that we can't do it in closed session legally. So anytime, but anytime you wish, you want to do it either through correspondence or through a conversation or something like that, I'm happy to do it. Well, there are certain things that can't be discussed because um, you're opening your books up and that's, that's illegal. And at the same time, we, I, I hope that the board now understands what's going on. The bottom line is taxi plate, one price, passenger, and they're taking advantage of that. But our community is suffering as well. We've lost four of our drivers who've put Uber cars on that, that um, are picking up people, not just in our community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Kevin. So, I mean, I, I agree it's unfair, clearly. But isn't your argument that we should find a way to regulate Uber versus, right, isn't that your whole argument, that they're not regulated and we are? Is that Mr. Greeley, understanding that? that's part of the argument, but let's, let's list Uber on delivery. There is no regulation on liveries, and there never <coughs> has been regulation on liveries. We should have nipped this in the bud 25 years ago. However, we did not, and this is the end result today. And we're going to leave that up to the state. Um, the Department of Public Utilities will, will probably take that over and, and, um, and take care of that regulation. Until then, um, I, I, would, I would, I guess, ask the board, why are we not concentrating on some type of prohibitive rulings for those who are picking up that are not legal in this community, in, in community and enforcing it? I think that's what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm asking. May I ask another one? Yeah, please. How could we possibly enforce it? Well, we have a police department. No, I understand. But how would, I mean, if I understand the way Uber works, and I've never used them, so I don't know. It's, it's done by cell phone, right? Yes. So we would have to be outside someone's address when they're being picked up. 
Uh, Mr. Grayley, it's going beyond that. They're p pulling on your stands with the few stands we have left. They're parking there. They're parking over in Belmont and down in Cambridge. And they're just, you know, picking up. I think a phone call from one of our drivers or our office would send a cruiser right down. And yet we're being scrutinized left and right, and extra uh, additional insurance. I I'll tell you how I feel. But we've got, we've got that. Yeah, uh, no, no, we, I know that. 2012, Mr. Greeley, I was beat up pretty bad here. And I, I, I'm, I'm still recovering from those bruises. And um, I don't know uh, where to go next. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, further discussion from the board? Joe. I, I just want to say, first of all, in, in that example of the, the um, pickups from the stands, I mean, it's illegal for them to, to be, for anyone other than taxis to be in those stands. So. I, I don't know why you wouldn't make the call. Sorry, yeah, so that, that's just one thing. Um, one of, part of um, your presentation, you said that you stated the um, difficulty in, in um, obtaining insurance beyond uh, in excess limits. Um, have you gotten any indication from your carriers that if the state does increase the limits at the state level, that, that they will cover to that level? The commissioner's office and car are well aware of the premium for those uh, carriers that write um, fleets uh, voluntarily. I don't know what they're going to do with the involuntary market out of the assigned risk bureau, but I think that they would take into consideration the cost. Now, one or two things will happen. I think that maybe that the premium for the livery once they establish what is, in fact, delivery, <coughs> may rise. Um, I think that maybe, for, hopefully, for the, uh, around the same money that we're paying, that our limits would, would be increased. But I can tell you this, I think it was as March 10th, just a few weeks back, um, they had a meeting on it, and nobody budged. So I can't answer that. Okay. So I, th I think where I feel like I am right now, I these limits have to be increased, I believe. But I, I'm tending to, 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 to uh, agree with the chair on the holding on. And I know we've been dragging this out a long time. We've been dragging this out a long time. But um, I don't want to have to come back here and do it again uh, in the future. And, and uh, I'm tending to agree with the chair that we should uh, give it just a little bit more time for the state process to work through. But they do have to increase one way or another. This will not be the only community to be statewide. I'm sorry, we're, um, it's just the board. Oh, I thought he was addressing right me, Mr. Chairman. He wasn't. You, oh. you can actually sit down. Oh, can I? Uh, thank you. Thank you. It, may I approach the bench and get my copy from Mr. You know, I actually have a question about that. Does this have to go into public record now yeah. that it was discussed by the board? Yeah. So we'll have to make a copy of it and put it in the public record, yes. Well, those are my personal records. I just shared that with the board. There's no such thing as a personal record at an open meeting. Okay, so um, we'll make a meeting of that. If there's any private information in there, we can redact, redact. private information. We'll make sure to do that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Further discussion? I'll wait till the end. Okay. Further, um, I think we have more taxi driver, more oh, taxi great. companies. Further discussion from the crowd? Please come forward. Good evening. The, um, glad to see that, uh, you know, we're all growing beards these days. It <laughs> seems like the, the new fashion statement. <laughs> the, uh, although I'm starting to think taxi is kind of like snow lately. It's become a four-letter word that shouldn't be used in public. Um, I'd like to respectfully ask that what the chair suggested at the beginning be seriously considered. There, there's so much on the table. There's so much moving about right now uh, between city of Boston looking at this, I know uh, Mayor Walsh and Mayor Curtitoni are heading up a committee that's looking at this. Um, the, the state is looking at it at the DPW level, CAR is looking at it. There, a bunch of them are waiting for a number of lawsuits to see how they fan out, to see how that's gonna affect. Uh, one of the things that's been floated about is that the Lyft ride, um, what is it, Lyft, Uber, Sidecar, and all them would be placed into the carpool so that would you know that would enhance the number of people insured it would raise the pool limits and then we would all have to get the same level of insurance that's one of the theories that's out there whether or not that happens 
a lot of people are waiting to see what action the state house takes and then car will respond to that to set the set the rates um you know it, it's hard i mean that i don't blame uber but they they have a billion dollars and we don't have a million between all of us the um you know and then when when we're also in a community there it's not a medallion community so the value of our permits is non-existent they're only valued based on next year's issuance so you know we don't have that wherewithal to sit there and be able to challenge all this with you know a group <coughs> of lawyers up here um I would just respectfully ask that you wait and see what action the state, mm -hmm. city of Boston, and some others take. I think there's going to be some action nationally on some of this because it's becoming an issue that, you know, what's next? Are they going to start having mobile uh, bar service? I know there's somebody out there trying to do a uh, fundraising thing for that. They want to have mobile bar services that will move around cities and towns. And if you don't regulate Uber, why would you regulate that? You know, I mean, it's now they're doing laundry mats or laundry service. It's you know, where's it start, where's it end? But I'd like to see what action the state takes because if the state takes the action, CAR will have to allow those rates, and then at least everyone in the industry will be on an equal footing. Right now, Uber is killing us, Lyft's killing us, Sidecar is killing us, uh, the bunch of unregulated livery services running around is killing us. If you raise our rates, and we have to raise our rates, we're gonna be priced out of a market that we're already dying in. And that'll mean cabs from Somerville, cabs from Cambridge will be able to come in, undercut what little taxi business there is still left. And none of us will be at the next meeting. Uh, we'll probably be applying for jobs or driving Uber. So. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Questions? Yes, Diane. Um, just the same question, um, if you know and you're, you feel comfortable saying, do you have a standard time that your liability insurance needs to be renewed? Mine is usually uh, November 30th because that's when the taxi plates renew. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Further questions? Kevin. Mr. Bonney, uh, are you down 50%? <coughs> More. 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 Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. I move we table. On your recommendation, sir, about uh, so we see what happens on the state level. Do we have a motion? Second. A motion and second. And yes. I, I'd also like to suggest that maybe if we, if we are tabling, I, I noticed that the petition is by Representative Garbo, mm -hmm. if it doesn't make sense to invite him in to uh, speak to us about the, the progress of the team. Okay. Can I get one last bite? We certainly can. Okay. Um, this was originally filed January 2013. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it's Representative Bradley or Senator. Yeah. And if you follow the evolution of it, back in January 13, goes to the House, goes to the Senate, they send it to the Committee on Financial uh, Services. <clears throat> it came out um, favorably by um, that committee, went back, languished all the way to, of 2014, and then came back again, Representative Gobbley, as you know what Bill's um, 20 people can file the same bill, right. you know, sign on as a sponsor. So at the last meeting in March of 2015, what the House did and the Senate concurred, which was to refer it back to financial services, which is what they did in January 2013. The reason why I, one of the main motivating factors that I have is, number one, whatever rate we set, the insurance companies will provide, I'm not talking medical pay or anything like that, but personal body, injury and um, property, whatever we set, you will be able to get insurance for that, number one. Number two, a lot of um, our Hackney providers are providing services to special ed um, students and young adults. And I know Rick Ionelli spoke very highly of um, several of the um, drivers that are doing that. And I think the nature of the business has changed as well as even if you're an able bodied person and you, you get hurt, 20,000, you know, unless it's a very minor um, accident. So I guess my pl plug here is I just see this languishing forever, forever, forever. Um, and, you know, I was, I was hoping at some point um, and perhaps 
maybe as a compromise, just hearing from um, the gentleman who came before us, it seems like the end of the year is when their um, policies are coming up for renewal. Um, I would like to take action on this tonight, but I don't think I can count to two, <laughs> unless I can count myself three times. Um, but you know, to, I don't want to keep waiting on the state because there's, there's some background stuff on this. If you, if you know, if you look at the litany and the evolution, and basically they've tossed this hot potato around for two years. You know, they've had recommendations of what it should be, but you know how it is. Constituents go in and groups go in and. Um, I think at some point we just have to put the hammer down. So if, if there's not an appetite to do it tonight, I guess I would just please implore my um, colleagues that, you know, by the end of the year, and I think the State House is still not going to come out with anything. I think the City of Boston will. Um, and again, it's around the Uber, too. It's, it's kind of tied. It's two hot potatoes. But I think to just keep saying, wait, wait for the state, wait for the state, they've been in my opinion, playing games with us for two years. And I'm just thinking of the nature of the business. Um, and I know sometimes it's really hard to be in Hackney and livery, you know, when the cost of gas was $4.79 um, a gallon. I know filling up my car was $75 to $80, now down to 15 or 20 You know, so there are things that rise and fall in every business. Um, and I think, you know, at some point, um, hopefully we can step up on this, especially, you know, I don't know if there's any way we can just um, I guess for the future, if we could increase the bodily injury side. I mean, because that's my main concern. But I think legally, we can't, you know, if we increase bodily, we have to, you know, in the medical profession, it's one times three. You have one million, three million, you have two million, six million in terms of coverage. But I'm not seeing the appetite for anybody wanting to uh, vote on this tonight. I guess I would just implore, let's not just keep doing what the state is doing and just do nothing. Mm -hmm. And then have someone come to the microphone and bring something in with medical costs, and we say, well, we're waiting for the state. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Dan. Uh, I definitely I understand your argument, Diane, for sure, but I'm not yet convinced that we can act without the state. Um, and so the thing that would, I can tell you, the thing that would convince me is that if uh, <coughs> I, so, on one hand, we've got several taxi um, owners and a quote from a specific insurance company of one of the taxi owners in our packet. And I don't have any corresponding, like, you know, essentially a counter argument where someone can say, if we do this rate change, the rate impact will be, and it's like a manageable number. And if I saw that, I would be ready to move out of line with the state. But right now, my, my instinct tells me, my instinct, as current, with the information I've got in front of me, I'm trusting the insurance company that, that actually you know, put their thoughts in paper. So the, I'm, I'm giving you the recipe for getting your vote, which is show me that the impact is reasonable. And if it is, I'll support it. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on the table. I think that, oh, we have further discussion? Okay. Oh. I, we can, uh, I just like to let you know I'm, I run higher rates. And that causes me a lot harder time to grow any bigger because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand would put me out of business. It would definitely put me out of business. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there a further discussion before we vote on this? Yes, Kevin. Well, uh, I, I, I agree we should wait for the state, but I hear what Diane is saying. So uh, I'm willing to amend my uh, motion to table until November 1st or whatever that first meeting in November is. Doesn't mean we're going to do anything different, and I don't know if that's soon enough for you, Diane, but um, I, I hear your point, and if it is indeed the end of November that a lot of them are renewing, then... Maybe that'll be a time enough. We'll see what the state has done by that point in time. I'll second you on that. Okay. So I will support that, but I do think that when we get, when we get to that point, I, I guess what I'm worried about is taking this issue up and then having to readdress it, you know, in, the, in another couple months after that. So I think that if we, my instinct is if we wait to see what the, state regulations are, we can do a, um, you know, a whole worth, we can come to a whole worthwhile approach that involves everyone at the table as opposed to 
um, you know, doing it this way. But I think um, where the, how the motion is, I will support it. And um, so um, motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. Four to one. Could I get um, some direction or just clarity on, on one thing right now? Yes. Um, so we currently won't renew until after a discussion in November, or should I go through that review pro uh, renewal process now? Yeah. I strongly feel we should just go forward with the rules as they exist. Yes, that's yeah. what I would anticipate. So I you will know which ones come up before November 1st, yes. They're all up, they're passed up because we've been waiting. So no, good, I will ready. renew then. Yes. Thank I'll you. talk with Joe Carabello and we'll go with the policy as it is. So even that issue with the bond mm -hmm. with the state, mm -hmm. we will not accept. We go to our policy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Um, moving on. Traffic <coughs> rules and orders and other business. Approval. Memorial for uh, Robert Bobby Mack McMurray. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. Dan. Uh, thank you to the Public Memorial Committee for their work. Thank you to this board for what I'm sure is its forthcoming approval, seeing as it did. I can tell you uh, I've only had a Board of Selectmen's packet make me cry once, and it was all the letters that we got in support of Bobby. And I was down to Quad Cycles on Sunday, and uh, we're getting ready to do a memorial ride and the certification of uh, like the event on April 4th. And so I hope that what people can join us and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a motion and a second further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. And thank you, Dan, for bringing that to our attention. Um, presentation from the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture Annual Report. Stephanie and Barbara. We just wanted to briefly highlight some of the, I mean, we're not gonna go through the whole report, it's brief anyway, but we just want to highlight a few of the items because they pertain to an upcoming meeting that we'd like you all to know about. Um, so some of the things that we've worked on over the past year is we've hired our new arts and culture liaison who you may have heard about or may have even met, Amy Manju. Um, she has been working on our website and she has created you know, a beautiful um, blog format. It's very graphically appealing with different um, organizations um, and institutions of arts and culture. And then if you click on the various circles, you can learn more about them and hear about upcoming events. She also keeps the cultural calendar, which all the arts organizations have been clamoring for for quite some time. No one has actually been able to do it in a sustainable way. And even though she's taken on a full-time job, she seems to somehow still be um, keeping, with this, keeping up with this uh, cultural calendar. So um, that's very exciting. And, uh, sure sustainable is the right word for what we have. <laughs> we have, we're very fortunate. <laughs> yeah, she is, she is um, keeping up with so far. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and um, also we've spent a lot of time discussing the idea of a cultural plan, um, starting to research cultural plans of other towns, partly <coughs> you know, thinking about it in conjunction with the master plan process that's been going on. Um, we have been uh, commenting on the various uh, white papers we did you know, in, when they were out in last spring um, um, on matters of arts and culture, just trying to um, create some awareness and, and uh, about, about that when we were talking about um, planning for the town and cultural venues and use of public space and things like that. Um, one thing that we've also been researching is this idea of cultural district designation. This came up um, a long time ago when we did the 2012 Arlington Alive meeting. We had Mary Jenkins from the Massachusetts Cultural Council speak at that meeting, and she was in charge of cultural districts. Um, and so it's something that now we're returning to as next steps for Arlington. We've thought about um, applying for a grant, you know, grant applications. We've thought about doing a cultural plan, and we're thinking about cultural district designation. It seems like cultural district designation is the lowest hanging fruit. What is cultural district designation? It is a designation from the Massachusetts Cultural Council given to towns that have a density of, of cultural offerings within a walkable 
geographically defined district. Uh, we, are, we have arguably at least two districts in town that are like that. Um, maybe we can make the argument that you know, lar a larger piece of the town could be designated. We're not sure, but right now we are planning on convening a meeting of some potential stakeholders, some, um, some key organizations on April 16th. Um, we are we are co-chairing, um, we are co-sponsoring uh, this meeting with Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee. We have had some joint meetings with them to discuss this. Um, so we've invited these key organizations to come. I know that um, Cambridge Savings Bank has accepted and uh, uh, Artbeat and um, Forest, uh, 13 Forest Gallery, the library, and we're collecting more RSVPs for this meeting we're to try. We're still sending out yeah. invitations, and we're trying to um, to put together a partnership because one of the requirements of cultural districts is that you must have a, a partnership that has um, public and private organizations and the town um, together, and uh, and and that that becomes the management organization of the district. They have to come up with a marketing plan uh, and a management plan for the district. Um, among the other steps. That, that may be taken. If the, um, the application does actually have to come from the town, it's a matter of your signing it, but it's also a matter of your holding a public hearing, announcing um, the intention of, that, of, of <coughs> wanting to form a cultural district. So right now we are for you gathering folks together to see um, if there is actually that will, if you're going to have the swell, if you're going to have the, the um, people power to actually manage this district, um, and if we have that support and the will of the cultural entities in town, then we hope that you will want to you know, host a hearing and, and possibly sign this application. Thank you very much. That sounds like an exciting time with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, no, very cool work. Um, questions, comments from the board? Joe. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Barbara and Stephanie. Um, you know, the commission is, is pretty young, but has, has really been um, going to town with, with a lot of uh, different initiatives. I don't think you mentioned, you, you mentioned uh, hiring Amy as, as the liaison. She, she's been um, donating her time right. to the town, she's 10 hours per, per, per week. So, um, and it's, it's uh, she's got a lot of energy and, and um, that was really a great, um, great initiative on your part. Um, I've been working with the, the um, ATED um, on the cultural district um, initiative, and I know that uh, you know all of the the members of the working group went out and talked to probably 12 or 15 different communities that have done that, um, including um, I had the opportunity to speak to our former planning director, Mr. McLennan, who is now a, um, a selectman down in Orleans, and um, and that community had had uh, had instituted a uh, cultural district. And he was very helpful because he knows our town as well. Was able to. Uh, give some, some great advice and point us to some other folks who have been very helpful in, in uh, kind of advising us and, and what Arlington's prospects would be. Um, <clears throat> I'd also note that one of the, um, I guess it's the newest member of the, the commission um, that the, the, the manager uh, appointed and we, we approved was Mr. Hyde, who uh, previously worked in the Mass Office of Tourism. Um, if we are successful in, in obtaining the cultural district, um, designation, the town does get promotion both through the Mass Cultural Council but also through the Mass Office of Tourism. They specifically promote um, these, these districts and I, I think we have a lot going for us. But this will have to be a big community uh, effort and I think that uh, Barbara and Stephanie and the others, you, you've done a great um, great job trying to drum up and, and identify organizations. It's, it's businesses, it's nonprofits, it's arts and cultural organizations, it's, it's governmental organizations. Um, so. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to the, uh, the, the upcoming meeting and, and the efforts around this. It, it does uh, give us preferential treatment in terms of uh, looking for grant um, support in the future. Or theoretically, it does, at least. That was the intent of the legislation. I don't think I misspoke, did I? No, no, no. It, it no. Does, <laughs> you're on the team and we're so grateful. No, it, it doesn't hurt for uh, a community to show all the different entities working together. And that is a way to get grants. Nobody's promising anything, but that is, what we're trying to do here to get um, businesses and arts organizations, cultural organizations, historical entities to come together. 37 communities in the Commonwealth have 
of named, there are 37 cultural districts. You can have up to three in each uh, city or town, right? So um, anyway, we are following our mandate among which is a cultural plan you know, for the board of, has charged us with the, that. And so we are, um, these are all part of a whole um, toward a cultural plan. And as Stephanie said, this is low hanging fruit. We think um, we are looking forward to seeing what the community members will say. And this is just a first step. There will be larger meetings to come. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, further Questions? discussion? Uh, first, I'd like to move receipt um, of your Second. annual report. And secondly, just a quick question, if it's still in the brewing stages and there's not an answer yet, that's fine. I'm just curious, um, I know it said somewhere in here, I believe that Amy met with Adam Kowalski, if I'm butchering his last name, I apologize, about um, getting a map that displays cultural organizations and something else. My question is, if this is the way you're going, I think it's fantastic. Do you envision the end result of that would be that somehow when people go on to the town, town, town of Arlington website, there'll be some sort of a feature that they can go to to actually see that? Like, where will this information be displayed? Go ahead. If you know right now. Well, to be honest, right now that map is a requirement of the cultural oh, okay. uh, district application. Good. It, Good. Yeah, and so that needs to go with the application. Then I think they come, the Mass Cultural Co Council uh, sends a representative that comes and walks that district with you and then kind of advises you on the boundaries of it and what's workable and what isn't. So oh, because I wanted to I say, think that's a great I think idea. it's a, yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be <laughs> No, whatever you yes. all, whatever you <laughs> yes. all say it's supposed to be, I'm not trying to, I just saw that and I thought, wow, that's a really great opportunity if I'm interpreting it or misinterpreting it the right, the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further discussion from the board. Jeff, I just want to make one other point. Uh, one important criterion for cultural <coughs> district designation is that uh, the district be walkable. It has to be walkable. So I think the work that, that this board's been doing, as well as the uh, the manager and the, and the town, in trying to improve, um, you know, pedestrian walkability and, and, and safety, is going to be. Well, th these will be key features, you know, include you know the Mass Ave corridor project as well as um, the Arlington Center safe travel projects. I think those those do play into it because um, that that's a that's a big criterion is that, that the districts be walkable. So thank you very much. Further discussion. Seeing none, we have a motion on the table. And again, we'd like to thank you so much for your hard work on this. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> so nothing. Thank you. Moving on, um, we have a, an approval for a letter, another letter to the <laughs> FAA that um, I drafted uh, last week when um, I was in touch with Frank Ciano, our um, CAC member. And uh, th this is the language that he, um, or I guess the direction that he recommended I go in with this letter. Um, it's one of, uh, one of these issues that when I first um, ran for the board, I never saw myself getting into. <laughs> but it's obviously um, you know, a very important one, and it, it does come down to a quality of life issue. And I certainly didn't uh, r really appreciate the response that we got last time, and I think that um, this uh, a second letter urging um, the FAA to take action in uh, I think uh, in, in this, it's meant to do so in a way that shows that we're doing this on a um, you know much more than a town level that we're doing this uh, with our neighbors who are also being affected by it so I hope that um, you know and uh, if you want to make any changes of course feel free and um, I just think um, it just shows where we stand on this so thank you Move approval and, and one question. Yes. Second. <clears throat> do you know um, or do you anticipate, um, I read the um, supported motion that you crafted uh, along with Frank Ciano and. Uh, so so I, I'll, I'll say that motion wasn't crafted oh, by sorry. us. Oh. Um, that motion was um, voted on by the CAC at their meeting and that's where that came from. Okay. And my only thing would be uh, the way I'm reading this language, it, it implies to me that there will definitely be, or there should be some sort of response back to the town. Do you know if that's a requirement or if that's something that we're hoping for and or any sort of timeline? Like is, is this a process that you did this and you'll get something back in 60 days, 90 days, or is it just 
We're giving it a shot. No, it, this, I think this is more of we're uh, putting our best foot forward. Okay. Um, okay. I think of it as, as us applying as much political pressure as we can yeah. to get our, if we can get our local and our state and our federal representatives all aligned, that'll be the only way we get this. Mm. So it's probably beyond our purview or, or any kind of... Um, we could demand an answer. I was going to say, know. I don't know if we could put anything <laughs> in there. But, but I think you know. the, the chairman's written the letter, and, and um, if he's comfortable with it, that's fine. And he certainly and has I, kept up to speed on it. So. And I think that they've, um, they've responded in the past. And I think that you know, while, while they might just you know, not put much consideration into their responses, they, they do get back to us. And I, I do see this as where um, we're just doing what we can to help out. And I, you know, I don't know if demanding, I don't think demands have gone very far in the past and I don't anticipate them to go. Oh, that's right. You just said if anyone forward. had any suggestions, yeah. I'll, I'll just drop that. Okay. Thank Trying you. to give us heat. Yeah. Yeah. Joe. Thanks. Yeah, they, they did kind of tell us to take a long flight up a short runway the last time. But um, this is just, just um, <clears throat> technically, I, as, uh, I, I would just suggest where it says respectfully the Arlington Board of Selectmen the chair sign on, on our behalf. And um, that we'd be sure to copy our, our state and federal um, legislative delegations, uh, as well as it, if it's advised these, there are some CAC members who have, and um, uh, <coughs> Logan officials who are specifically called out in the original Belmont letter that we make sure that copies of ours, our correspondence sure. goes to that list, as well as all of our delegation. Mm. Thank you. That's all, thank you. Further? Seeing none, anyone in the audience? Seeing none. Um, so we have a motion and a second, and no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. <coughs> Moving on, we have an endorsement of a letter to the state delegation regarding MBTA assessments. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so very briefly, I put a letter before the board for its consideration to endorse uh, the chairman, chairman of the finance committee, and myself signing on, sending a letter to our delegation. The letter sample you have is to Senator Donnelly, but of course we send it to uh, Representatives Garberly and Rogers. Uh, this issue very quickly uh, came to the attention of myself and chair of the finance committee, El Tosti, at an MMA fiscal policy meeting we were attending, where the executive director of the MBTA advisory board was presenting more macro level is uh, issues in regards to funding for the MBTA, and also distributed um, uh, the attachment that you see on here showing how the assessment is calculated. Uh, his point was to bring to our attention that the MBTA may be considering increases in assessments as just one means or a means of increasing their funding going forward. What uh, the chair of the finance committee quickly noticed is that Arlington in that calculation has a weight of nine. nine That's a manner in which they assign level of service. Um, so Arlington has a nine and with a quick further look as is outlined in the letter, Quincy has a weight of three. Uh, there are other communities that quickly come to your mind when you look through the list that have what appear to be an inequitable weight compared to Arlington. Uh, so myself and Mr. Tosti quickly agreed that taking action on this now uh, was an appropriate time because there's so much attention on the T, there's a special commission studying the T, and there may be an opportunity to get a foot in the door here for some changes to this uh, assessment formula. Um, I say that this is the right time because this assessment formula is actually in the statute that was passed in 1999, went into effect in FY2000, setting forth MBTA funding. So this can't simply be regulatorily changed by the MBTA uh, or MassDOT. It actually has to be a state law change to change these weights. Um, without too much further detail, I think some of the cause of this is that the original communities in the MBTA, for lack of a better way to say, got the short end of the stick here. So those up above the gray line you see on the chart, Arlington being one of those, mm -hmm. those are the original communities that have the higher weights and then communities that were added on subsequently uh, did not receive such higher weights. Uh, there may be some other reasons in regards to the decision, uh, decision making that was made in 1999 that led to this, but um, without saying more, I think this is an appropriate uh, step for us to take to notify our legislature, uh, our legislative delegation of our desire to have this explored uh, and some equity be pursued for Arlington. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> what a find. I mean, I can't believe that this isn't a discussion everywhere more often. Um, 
So thank you very much to uh, Adam and El Tosti. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to sign on to this. Um, move for, oh, to Dan, sorry. Uh, I was going to move approval. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Joe. I just noticed the theme of the night is planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a big fine. I think this is another benefit of having our, our manager um, at the table at, at these um, MMA, um, the fiscal local local what is it the fiscal, fiscal pol policy committee fiscal policy committee and on the board to, to help us um, mm. find some of these things. I agree. Yes, Diane. You may have already said it in your remarks, and I just didn't glean it out, and I apologize. Um, is there? We're asking the senator and the two reps to, you know, look at this formula, look at the inequity. We're, we're at a nine. Lexington, uh, Burlington, other like communities are at a three. Do we already know um, from yourself or Mr. Tossi or whoever else has looked at this, what part of that formula is really penalizing Arlington, or is it just kind of like we get penalized in terms of our income and education funds? So the way the formula works is they take whatever that weighting factor is and multiply your population by that, mm. and that gives you your percentage of the total assessment. So the total assessment is, uh, I believe, $160 million. Mm -hmm. So after they take your population, multiply by the weight, they get that percentage, and that's what you pay. So because we are 42,000 times nine, we have a much higher percentage than somebody who even has a population like Quincy, of 93,000 multiplied by three. So they're pr even though they're, they're bigger than us, they have mm -hmm. more red line stuff, uh, more bus lines than us, mm -hmm. they pay less than us. Which no, no, I get all that. What I'm saying is can we identify in the formula where it's our weight, I mean, there must be some, how do we get to a nine and, you know, Lexington gets to a three and Quincy, I think, may, might have been a three. I mean, do we know that yet or it's just, it's one of those crazy formulas that just kind of. I don't think there is a formula. That, okay, thank you. That's what I. A decision made by the legislature. Okay, that, that, that's what I. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Yes. Well, Mr. Good, Grayley. good catch, <coughs> all of you, including you, Mr. Chairman. But it's amazing how above the gray line and then the dramatic drop to three or one. I mean, there's, there doesn't seem to be, unless I'm missing it, fours or fives or, you know what I mean? It's nine mm -hmm. to three yeah. is the next lowest. 18, 12, 9, that's I it. I think they kept it as multiples of three, it appears, for some reason. I don't well, know. Well, give us six then, will you? You know, we'll take that. <laughs> I'll take a one. <laughs> <laughs> if we're putting orders in. Yeah. I will Thank say, I, I do think we have some potential partners in this effort, especially with a, maybe a Belmont. Watertown. Or even a Medford or a Watertown that, that they have service. And we don't not have service, but certainly not service to the level of some of these communities that are rated mm -hmm. far lower. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further Mr. discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, back to Mr. Chaplain. Designation of a uh, special municipal employee, attorney Kevin Batt as special municipal employee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we, um, in trying to finalize uh, the solar power purchase agreement that was presented to the board last fall, uh, and in working with the Finance Committee in discussions regarding that agreement, um, we have, uh, for a very limited scope, hired attorney Kevin Batt to review that agreement. He has an expertise uh, in solar power purchase agreements. Uh, however, in his um, practice, he also serves as Lexington uh, outside counsel uh, with his firm, Anderson Krieger. So to avoid any potential conflicts in the future, he requested that we designate him as a special municipal employee which provides those protections against conflicts in the future for doing this work at this point, and then eventually potentially representing Lexington in uh, an action against Arlington in the future. Uh, not, not to be negative, but that would be the, the protection he'd be seeking. So uh, town council did have an opportunity to uh, review that. I don't want to speak for him, but uh, if you want to add anything. Yeah, I, I don't have any uh, discomfort in this. It's a highly unusual situation that you'd be having a private counsel who represents a town disparate interests, not just in terms of the litigation, but in terms of certain types of uh, uh, situations that come up from time to time, memorandums of agreement, um, different types of uh, agreements that we enter that are not necessarily, we're not always uh, have uh, the same interests, I guess is the right way, to, right way to put it. We need to advocate 
for uh, Arlington's perspective and Lexington needs to advocate their perspective. So it's a rare situation, but I think it's appropriate here, and I think it's, um, I think it's a risk management move that makes sense. Thank you very much, Judge. Yes, Diane. I'd like to move that we designate Attorney Kevin Batt um, as a special municipal employee. And then I have one question. Second. Um, do we need to put any sort of uh, time on this, or is it just ad infinitum, or? Can I, can I? So we're designating the, the, it's sort of the position, the special municipal council for the sole purpose of reviewing this power purchasing agreement, so we don't need to put a specific limitation okay. on it, because it'll basically expire with that position. That's fine, thank you. Thank you very much. Further questions? Seeing none, we have a motion at all? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, busy night for Mr. Chaplain. A vote for the reinstatement of metering in municipal lots. You have to spread me out on the agenda, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, sometime uh, last month, we had requested uh, an emergency agenda item for the board to suspend metering uh, based on the sheer amount of snow and what the weather was doing to the operability of the meters. Uh, at this point, um, I'd like to ask the board to vote to reinstate the metering. Um, a, the, the snow has melted and been cleared to such a degree that that's no longer an issue. Uh, they all four are currently operable, as I understand. Uh, and in terms of managing both the amount of revenue that we'd expect to collect the remainder of the fiscal year and also manage um, the permits in the lot, so having people have to pay in the meters and then also uh, have available permit spaces makes it important to get the meters back up and running at this point. Uh, I will say we have narrowed down to one vendor uh, with our search for replacement of ki uh, kiosks. Uh, we've got confirmed pricing and should be able to act uh, very shortly to move towards the purchase and then eventual installation of new kiosks uh, in the very near future. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know this might not be uh, an easy vote and that I think um, well, everyone's expressed their frustration with um, the meters in the lots uh, several times um, in recent years, months, days. Um, but I do think this is uh, the right decision. Um, you know, just for, to put some fairness back in the lots, I, I don't think it's fair that we're charging monthly rates while we're not collecting um, rates for the actual meters. And, and I, I do think it comes out to quite a lot of revenue that will be lost if we don't, um, you know, reinstate these, or any, it will be even extra revenue loss if we then say, you know, okay, well, we won't pay money for um, monthly passes either. I don't think that's really the right decision to, to make. So uh, that's my pitch, but further discussion. Joe. I'll move to approve the, I'll grudgingly move to approve the, uh, the manager's motion to reinstate the, the meters, noting that perhaps he would like to hold on to those contractor trash bags because those meters looked really nice inside of them. <laughs> We have a motion. Further discussion? Dan. First of all, second. Um, I wonder if we should have some sort of like ceremony with the old machines and maybe we can like auction off, like maybe like there's a, like, you know, like a car compressor thing and like you get to be the person who presses the button that <laughs> destroys the meeting or destroys the meters. Or maybe we can like have a public like, spectacle where we like drop them from something really high and we sell tickets. I like that. We can you get know, a like engine yeah. three, a little ladder. When I was a kid, the local fair had an opportunity. They'd bring in a junk car, and for five bucks, you could exactly. take a swing at the sledgehammer. At it. That's the exact <laughs> type of thing that I'm thinking Pound about. Pound day. Yeah. Pound day. There <laughs> we go. I nominate Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kiro to oversee that. Amen. Right. I'll pull up the pickup right, truck. Right, <laughs> Sorry. Further discussion. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, Mr. Greeley. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Warrant Mr. Article Chairman. 11, are you interested in? I'd like to speak if I may, sir. As I warned you, I would at the last meeting. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would first like to move that we reopen the hearing on warrant article 11. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And what I would like to recommend, sir, is if uh, people have article 11 in front of them under section one, establishment and membership, and under paragraph B, 
at the bottom of paragraph B where it states all, um, no, sorry, the bottom of uh, paragraph A, excuse me, and four at-large members appointed by the town manager subject to approval by the board of selectmen. Um, I, and I'd like to replace that, sir. And on the basis of, you know, I really feel this is going to be using tax dollars, and I feel we really need a coordination among ourselves, among this uh, committee, uh, CDBG funding, uh, general budgets, et cetera. So uh, I would like us to be a little bit more actively involved, the Board of Selectmen, and actually in this approval. So I'd like that replaced with, and four at-large members appointed by a joint vote of approval by the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager as follows. Candidates for at-large membership shall be jointly gathered and screened by the Town Manager and the Chair of the Board of Selectmen or designee who shall jointly forward recommended candidates for a vote on appointment by the full Board of Selectmen plus the Town Manager. So a majority vote, the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager shall be required for appointment to an at-large member position. Uh, further, and I'm not sure of the wording of this, I'm sure Town Council can help me, but we had before stated that these, this committee should be formed uh, 30 days after approval of the warrant by the Attorney General. I'd like to also amend that to say 45 days. So that's my motion, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Greeley. Mr. Yep. Burke, may I? Yes. Just so you know, that Section 6 effective date, if you're trying to find where the, the 30 versus 45 days are. Section 6. Thank you very much, Ken. Okay, thank you. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion? Diane. Um, not sure if you would consider splitting no. the votes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, because I'm with you on the first part. Yeah. On the second part, as you know, it was 45 days. We had discussion. Yeah. Um, and I had discussion with Ms. Rowe. Um, and that's where the 30 days came up. Um, and okay. everybody said they could. Uh, I'm, sure. you know, that's where sure, I could. Yeah. So, so if you could split the vote, because the only reason I ch changed the 45 to the th 30 is when I spoke to key people involved, that was um, the desired change. And um, Ms. Rose stated, you know, it's something that definitely could be done within that time period. And I don't want to misrepresent the manager who said, of course, it'll be less time, but, you know, we have some notice and, you know, they could work within the parameters of the 30 days. So that's why I'd like to vote yes, yes. for the second yes. and implore my colleagues. Mr. Chairman, I split that, okay, Thank for the you. Warren article that the, the I mean, uh, the motion, motion one is on the, uh, uh, this board with the town manager uh, actually approving the four candidates, and then I'll, I'll move for the other part of it, sir, if that's okay. That, uh, that works for me. Further discussion? Joe. Yeah, I, I'll just say that, I, I mean, I think I already stated this at the last meeting. I know that in our initial discussion, I was kind of on the horns of a dilemma. Uh, I, I think our precedent for a lot of our committee appointments works well with the manager, but as I've since that time, as I've talked to people in the community, people who are very involved in the C CPA um, effort, I mean, I, I think I've become convinced that, that th this is special and um, it, it does warrant the additional scrutiny. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm happy to support the motion and, um, and, and uh, have us involved in the screening jointly with the, uh, the manager on, on this. Thank you very much. Further discussion, Dan. Uh, I definitely, when we discussed this the last time, I saw the merits of both ways, and I don't think I appreciated your passion on the, how, where you think that the, 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 you know, one option over the other. And uh, when I don't have that passion, I definitely, I should have then, and I do now, I defer to yours also on supporting it. Thank you. That, that was very well put, because um, I, I think I, I felt pretty strongly going the other way, um, not as strongly as Mr really felt, and, uh, and I do see the merits of doing it this way. That being said, I, I, I would really urge um, my colleagues to vote for the 45 days. I think that adding uh, this extra layer, um, giving, those for, giving those additional days will help um, in the coordination and kind of make the process move a bit more smoothly. So um, there's my pitch um, the other way. But uh, that being said, we have two motions on the table. We'll take them uh, separately. But is there any discussion from the crowd? 
Seeing none, any further discussion from the board? Mr. Greeley. I, I just, and I should have um, preambled uh, with this, but this has absolutely nothing to do with total confidence in Adam Chapdelaine on his own being able to do a very excellent job as he has on all appointments. Uh, but, you know, tax dollars, I feel we should have approval, not just uh, appointment, not just approval of appointment. So. And it's also why I insist on including him with us in the final vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Reilly. So we'll have a, um, we have a motion for uh, Mr. Gurley's first suggestion. Did we have a second for it? I second it. Yes. We I have a second. It. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Of Mr. Greeley's first um, first recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Four nothing. Um, we have another motion on the table that was seconded for the um, extension to 45 days. Did you oh. make that, Mr. Greeley? Yes, I did. Well, I'll remake it yeah. if you want. Okay, me to you want to remake yes. it? Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion on the table to extend it to 45 days. All those in favor, please say aye. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, um, Mrs. Muhammad's raising her hand up. Oh, you want to go no, over and, and No, just um, very briefly what I want to say is same due diligence as, as previous. Um, the reason the 30-day idea did not come from me. It actually came from people involved yeah. with the Community Preservation Act, specifically Ms. Rowe, who I place a lot of value on her opinion, so I guess I just put my pitch that we keep it at the 30. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, Dan. Amusingly, um, and the, uh, Mr. Rarig bent my ear and he said, go with the 45. So we're going to have to lock the two of them into a room. And <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to, the person who talked to me last is going to win on this one. Yes, Joe. I think I'm persuaded by an argument the chair made at our last meeting. Um, he noted that if we're going to, to uh, with, as we have gone with Mr. Greeley's proposal, we're going to inevitably have more scheduling difficulties because we're now going to have to have a selectman and a manager and probably a slew of applicants. If and I'm sure all of us have had a lot of people saying uh, that they'd like to apply for this. So it strikes me that logistically uh, it's just, it's fairer to the manager and, and, um, and all around to to go with the 45 days. Even saying that, though, I know that in our initial discussion we had stated that it should be possible to start this process rolling in some measure even before the Attorney General um, you know, approves the town meeting action. I would hope that we could do that. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Well, uh, uh, with all due respect to Mr. Mahan, I, I'm going to support the 45 because I really do think as long as we're clear to candidates subject to approval by the Attorney General, it seems to me the day of that approval, these appointments could be made and there's no reason why the committee can't meet at that point in time. But, so, yeah. but I do agree adding a selectman to this process might, might take a little bit more time for these interviews. Thank you very much. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Four to one. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Yes, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Yes. I, I think I, I may make a motion that I think might put Mrs. Mahan on the spot a little bit. But I just, I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the final remarks uh, as amended. So basically what I'm trying to get at is, are, are we recording our vote as 5-0 or are we recording our vote as 4-1 in, oh. in, the, in the final accounting of it? If you, you want to make a motion? I would, I would make that I'll motion. I'll second that. Yeah. Motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. So that's to approve the final comments unanimously. <coughs> so, uh, nice to Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. So just to make sure I understand, um, the, the comments, uh, I think, need to be modified from their current form to reflect the discussion that will have that happened here. But this motion has been made so that the comments will reflect that the overall support for this measure is five. Thank you. Thank you. See, I can take the spot. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. Thank, I, I was thank in the you same for doing spot. that. I was in the same spot when, when I thought I was going to lose 3-2 mm -hmm. and I was ready to vote 5-0 on the final. I just was, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, now on to warrants article hearings. So um, 
as we've done before. Um, for this year's hearing process, um, I'm going to ask that each presenter makes their presentation within 15 minutes at the 12 minute mark. I will inform the speaker of the time and ask that you begin your concluding remarks. Following your presentation, we'll have a um, question, answer, and discussion period for the board members and the presenter. Uh, at the conclusion of uh, that question, answer, and discussion period, I'll ask if any members of the audience would like to comment on the warrant before us. That individual will have five minutes to make their remarks, um, which will also be followed by the same process from the board. Um, after all of the members of the public who want to speak are given the opportunity, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. And of course, we appreciate everyone's cooperation in this process. So let's get started. Article 12, Vision 2020 Standing Committee. Julie, I would li uh, like to thank Julie for her all, all her work on this. I know um, you've devoted quite a lot of time to it, so thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, I won't need anything like 15 minutes. <laughs> this is <laughs> we're not really uh, planning to make radical change to Vision 2020. Um, the uh, just the quick summary and background is, of course, Vision 2020 was created by town meeting in 1992, and um, at that time, it was largely created to operate as an oversight and advisory board um, uh, because Vision 2020 exists as a standing committee and multiple subgroups, task groups underneath it. Um, that uh, advisory piece is very important <coughs> and sort of the heart of Vision 2020. Um, the standing committee was created with 22 positions, um, which includes chairmen of the uh, school committee and the board of selectmen and the finance committee and the redevelopment board and the town manager and the superintendent and um, that's a lot of very very busy people so just logistically speaking getting 22 people um, in the room uh, month after month is challenging in addition it's not very efficient because some of the work that the standing committee has to do to operate vision 2020 includes planning town day, managing the budget, and it's really unreasonable to ask Adam or Steve or Dan to be there for planning town day. Um, yes, so, um, it's, uh, so the concept is simply to recognize that there are two functions. There's the management piece and there's the advisory piece. We split the standing committee into two pieces. We'd have a 10 member advisory board of the elected officials and town leaders with the expectation that those people would uh, join the standing committee um, three or four times a year where we can really have a meeting that's focused on uh, the strategy piece and really doing the work of uh, working on the town goals, which is really what Vision 2020 was created to do, to constantly assess and reevaluate our progress towards meeting those very lofty ideals. Um, the standing committee itself would function as a nine member committee, um, there'd be a chair and then uh, an eight, eight <coughs> residents of the town appointed um, two by each of the, of the boards involved, the school committee, the selectmen, the moderator gets to and um, planning, AMD. redevelopment board. So that's pretty much the concept. Thank you um, Unless very there's much. something you want to add, Terry. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Questions? The, yes, Diane. Uh, um, move approval. And I just put this question Second. out there. And, and if it's something that is already implied, is inherent, or is not needed, that's fine. Um, there's no language or verbiage in here um, for the voting members. And I, I'm just putting it as a question to you. Some committees, boards, commissions have that if the actual voting members miss a certain amount of me uh, meetings, um, pending any, you know, emergency, medical, catastrophic, whatever, that um, that that uh, uh, members appoint uh, membership comes up and someone gets reappointed. I don't see anything in here that says that. Is that just so something you don't feel that you need? I think with a nine-member uh, board that's appointed specifically to do that work. Okay. Um, I, I'm not. That's concerned. fine. No, if you feel, feel it's not needed, then that's fine. Thank you, because it's. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I support favorable action. Mr. Yeah, I, I think 
both Mr. Byrne and I were at some of the conversations um, of Vision 2020 around this, and I think that you've uh, come up with a fairly um, elegant solution. It will make you know a strong governing, you know, leave you with a strong governing body. I know there was a lot of discussion on the role of the standing committees, and I think the decision to just ensure that that Vision 2020 is flexible, self-governed, and can create and dissolve standing committees as you see fit is is the wisest uh, route, and, and I'm glad that this is the, the formulation that you uh, decided to take, so I'm happy to support the uh, the recommendation. Thank you. Mr. John. Yeah, I, I also support it. I know I struggled with um, attending when I was the chair, and, and uh, so I think that the I think that the concept of refocusing it makes a lot of sense for making it such that you can, you know, be there when you're going to be helpful and not be there when you're not. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you very much. Um, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Um, I know that a lot of people played a role in bringing this, um, yeah, bring this one article together. So um, they all deserve to be thanked. Um, but no, I, I do think that this will um, definitely help. Um, Moving forward, you know, um, Vision 2020 does a lot of important work, and it's important every so often to reevaluate um, the work that's been done and see how it can be more agile moving forward, and I think that's exactly what this does. So um, with a motion and a second, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Um, moving on, Article <coughs> 19, Revolving Funds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the annual vote uh, that's put before the Board of Selectmen and then ultimately town meeting authorizing the various revolving funds uh, utilized by the town. Uh, this year we've provided the original votes as are put together by uh, the comptroller or the original statement of each of the accounts uh, and the funds along with the more detailed breakdown that we first started providing last year as a supplementary uh, piece to be provided in the Selectmen's report. Uh, in the document before you, I think that more supplementary piece comes first uh, within the formal votes coming after. Uh, I would recommend one small change uh, that we didn't get in uh, in time for this submission on page three of the document. Uh, the second from the bottom uh, of the list, the library vend fund uh, currently has an expenditures not to exceed cap of 12,000. Uh, that was exceeded last year, so I would ask that the board uh, increase that uh, expenditures not to exceed cap in today's vote to 25,000. To what? To 25,000. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a little deaf in one ear. <laughs> it's all right. Kind of yelled. <laughs> um, Kevin. Yeah, move we recommend favorable action. Dan. Second. Uh, Adam, should we worry, or should we increase the Board of Health too, seeing as it was at 97 out of 100? It's uh, top of page two. Of yeah, the so you know, they didn't raise concern to me, but I don't think it would be, I think it would be prudent to do so. So per perhaps, um, you know, by another increment of maybe 25,000 to, to not have to act more regularly might be uh, advisable if the board uh, so chooses. Mr. Greeley, are you okay with that as an amendment? Yes, I am. Second. So it's 100,000 to 125? Is that yes, on so. the Board of Health fees. I, I just have one question on the uh, expenditures as. Um, as shown, I don't know if you know, Mr. Manager, um, it, it seems to me that th within this past fiscal year, we approved uh, expenditures out of the private way repair fund, but I don't see any reflected here. here. Perhaps it wasn't, uh, maybe it was the previous fiscal year, but I thought it was this one. So this actually. Wright um, Street, I think it was. Right? Yeah, yeah. Th this actually, this cuts off at the, uh, as of June 30, 2014. So the expenditures may not have occurred until after that. It looks like, I'm, I'm guessing we collected some of those payments in that $37,000 right. collection, but didn't actually pay the contractor until this, in within this current fiscal year that we're operating in right now. Right, okay. Okay, great, thank you. No problem. Mr. Manager, Fred, Diane. Um, just, I guess two comments, or, and or maybe if there is actually an answer to either question, um, the town manager could provided. I'm just curious, um, two things just stuck out on the revolving fund and expenditure detail, and it was the Robbins House and Gibbs School Energy. Those are the only two that have utilities. Um, 
I just looked at that and knowing the nature of both buildings, if there's any programs in the future in terms of um, where we don't see utilities from the town hall, anything to compare it to. But I just I noticed that that was the two and they are two very old buildings. Um, just wanted to highlight that that kind of stuck out for me. And then the other thing was uh, under the Robbins house, um, I'm just curious in terms of the maintenance costs. When I look at some of the other comparable maintenance costs, um, seems to be the largest by far. So I'm just wondering if there was a big project that we took on and that number's gonna go back down in future years or is this a trend that we're spending that much more um, over at the Robbins house? And is it because of the nature of the building? Is it historical district requirements or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you, I just wanted to just put that before you that that kind of just stood out and if you could just maybe in the future, if there is an answer, maybe it, it is what it is. So uh, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please uh, So in regards to utilities, uh, the Gibbs Fund is solely for payment of utilities uh, for the vendors, yeah. so that's, that's why that's utilities. In terms of the Robbins House, that's really attributable to the outside uses, outside of the town function for the rentals and the utilities that are used. So the Robbins House Fund and at times the Town Hall uh, Fund are used uh, to pay for utilities if appropriate. Uh, in terms of the maintenance, um, on the spot I don't uh, know if that was for a specific project, so I, I can follow up with you on that. that that's a fair question. Thank you. Mr. He made him chairman. I believe uh, I've had conversations with uh, uh, folks about that property. And I believe that is attributed to a, uh, and obviously Mr. Chaplain, but I just want to say that I do believe that is uh, due to a, a specific maintenance project. Yeah, no, if you can look into it, because my memory is it was a five figure last year also, but my memory could be wrong. Okay. Thank you. I doubt it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, very much. Further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second, and that motion includes uh, Mr. Dunn's amendment. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chaplain, you also had an amendment first. Yeah. Right. So yeah, the yeah. And the yes, for so that we okay. increased um, the vending to 25 and the health to 125. Okay. Um, and once again, I failed to ask. Doug, do you have enough information for everything? I've got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, final votes and comments. Articles for review. Um, Article 7, um, zoning bylaw amendment, um, regulation of posted event notices. Article 13, disposition of real estate, 1207 Mass Ave. Article 16, acceptance of legislation, complete streets program. Article 46, resolution, master plan endorsement. Move approval. Second. Motion a second. Further discussion? Dan. Uh, I was really happy with the way the signs language came out. I was really pleased with that. I think that that really cuts through a lot of the challenge. Uh, I do think, and so I urge the chairman to work with the moderator and the chair of the ARB and probably the town manager too to coordinate how that's going to play out on the floor of town meeting. Because I think we've got, if, if we're not careful, we're going to have a lot of conflicting messages out there. And I, I suspect that we can get to the same place, but it's going to take a little dancing. Good point. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much for your work on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had... How, how, how were we planning, or did, were we planning on talking about the final vote on complete streets? Did I, is that next, uh, did we have that on our agenda anywhere or no? We just voted it. Oh, it, it included the, it, mm, the revised language. <laughs> Pardon me. Not the complete streets. I thought I saw that. Yeah, the complete streets is article 16. Yeah. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I'm You'll see the... Um, and it's, uh, it's on your desk. It came late in an email. Yes. Okay. I didn't realize... So the, the, I, I just hadn't real, realized that this, so we are including... So this was a part of the motion that we just yes. did. Good. I'm happy. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's see. I think that wraps up the meeting. Um, Mr. Chairman? I'm yes. Um, I, I, and I apologize for uh, the, the late notice on this. It's something that was raised uh, to my attention while I was... 
uh, out on leave and I only got the opportunity to uh, get a full amount of information that was required to address this issue today. It does re uh, relate to um, votes and comments. Um, with respect to vote and comments on Article 9 that this board previously approved, um, there was a uh, complaint by the proponent that the um, comment for Article 9 uh, noted that the AARC, the Arlington Human Rights Commission, quote unquote, corroborated this view at the hearing. Um, as the board knows, your votes and comments are based on my notes. I try to take copious notes and accurately reflect as best as I can the board's um, overall impression as well as the comments from many folks in the audience. Um, however, I will say that I looked back at the tape, which was not initially available to me, and I did note that the uh, individual who came and spoke from the Arlington Human Rights Commission did not, in fact, um, necessarily corroborate as much as she said that they would report uh, further to town meeting. Uh, I feel like this is a mistake that I've uh, made in terms of representing this, and um, I would respectfully request uh, that the board uh, take a vote to strike that specific piece from its previously approved language. The um, last sentence, which just says AHRC corroborated this view at hearing. So moved. So moved. Do we have, we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Um, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for taking care of that, Doug. Thank you very much, and I and, um, I know with uh, new business, we have a set plan, but I am going to go out of order and congratulate Doug and his family on welcoming a um, new baby girl, Piper. So we're very happy for you, and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. If I may just say, um, I very much appreciate uh, the town personnel, including all of the legal staff at Jarvis House, as well as all of you for your patience and support during the period of time I was out um, with my wife and my uh, older daughter and my the new addition to our family. It's very much appreciated all the kind words that you all offered, as well as, again, the patience at this really busy time of year. Um, the town manager and his staff, as well as, uh, again, uh, the selectman's office and folks in the Jarvis House planning, all these folks were really <coughs> terrific in, in being patient while I was addressing a few things by email, but spending some time with, with my family. So I thank you all very much. Please don't thank us. Yeah, well deserved. Uh, uh, may I, are you aware that playing Red Sox baseball games or a baby's crib at night will help that child to grow up more intelligent <laughs> than, <laughs> than if you were playing Yankee, well, let's say Yankee baseball games. Are you aware of that research? Mr. Greeley, I don't know whether you're aware that my wife would sign on to that research <laughs> <at> Red Sox <laughs> You're That's not the making one life we any want. easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Doug. Thank you, sir. Um, so, new business. Marianne. None. Doug. None. Thank you. Of course. Adam. Uh, two pieces of new business. Uh, believe it or not, with uh, spring allegedly uh, here, the Mass Ave Corridor project is due to uh, begin work uh, very soon. So, uh, they're going to actually be starting up again next week. Uh, with uh, some early work. Uh, we have a three-week look-ahead that's been drafted just going through some final approvals with MassDOT, uh, and I'll be providing that to the board and then sending it out publicly, hopefully within the next two days. Uh, and then we'll be putting together a public meeting to be held in early May uh, to sort of update everybody on the progress, what the schedule is, and where it will go over the next, uh, you know, six months to year. Um, the work that's going to start next week is going to be very similar to the work that we saw at the end of the construction season. Sidewalk work on the, I guess it would be the north side of Mass Ave or left when you're facing Cambridge, uh, proceeding down towards Capitol Square. Uh, and then subsequently, uh, several weeks from now, it will start on the south side of Mass Ave, back at Pond Lane, but it will never be parallel such that parallel sidewalks are being uh, excavated at the same time. So uh, I'm uh, very pleased that they're chomping at the bit, ready to get at it uh, now that we've got a little bit of a thaw going. Uh, and we'll keep the public dialogue moving. So uh, that's sort of exciting to me. Uh, <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to inform the board about is that the town has become aware and has now, as of today, uh, been given uh, some level of detailed information about a proposed development at the Mugar site. Uh, as you probably know, the Mugar property is about 17 acres, forming roughly a triangle down near Thorndike Park, bordered by Route 2, Thorndike Park, Thorndike Fields uh, and the neighborhood um, with Dorothy Street being most adjacent to uh, the property. Uh, <coughs> a group called Oak Tree Development uh, has informed us that they're going to be pursuing a 40B housing project on that site. Uh, the proposal that they described uh, to myself and some other uh, staff from town this morning 
would include uh, proposing 219 units, 12 of which would be townhomes on approximately seven acres of the site. Uh, they would then be committing to conserving the remaining 10 and a half acres via either a conservation deed restriction uh, or by gifting the land to either the town or a nonprofit for the purposes of conservation. Um, so they, they uh, provided some uh, detail about the buildings, parking, uh, hydrology or, or, or flooding issues uh, at the meeting this morning. Uh, it was myself, the planning director, the director of inspectional services, uh, town council, as well as the director of public works uh, sitting in and listening this morning. <clears throat> and I think we collectively all expressed our serious concerns uh, about flooding and traffic impacts in the neighborhood and the appropriateness uh, or, or whether there was any appropriateness of the site for such development. Um, obviously there was no uh, decisions, commitments or anything made. I did let them know that I thought letting the board know and thereby letting the public know that we have knowledge of this was the appropriate thing to do tonight. So uh, I don't know that um, discussion right now uh, would be necessary, but happy to uh, either have the developer before the board at some point or have further discussions with the board about the town's position and actions to be taken. Thank you. I, um, I agree that this um, being that it is on the new business, um, probably not the right time to have a discussion on this. Um, I know that we will have to have many moving forward and um, perhaps even have it on the agenda item um, sooner as an agenda on a future, have it as an item on a future agenda um, in the near future to discuss, but thank you. One quick question. You said 219 units? In Thank inclusive you. of 12 townhomes. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of units. Mm -hmm. uh, by, by comparison, if I may, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, by comparison, Brigham's is, uh, the Brigham property is about 116 units and Sims is 168 units. So by comparison standards, it's a large number of units. Thank you. And, and uh, what makes it a 40B in particular? Uh, is that just a term uh, for a large development, you know what I mean? Or uh, so uh, what would make it a 40B is they would be able to bypass any uh, local zoning requirements by including uh, a 25% affordable housing within the uh, right, complex. Okay. Thank you. I didn't remember that. A um, lot of issues here, for sure. Um, moving on. Mr. Greeley. Uh, on new, new business. Oh, new business. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, two quick things. One is... I want to thank our Mayor Marie Kripelker at home, or Marianne Sullivan, or Fran, or, or Jean, or whoever is responsible. Our wall of fame is current in the back of the hall. Okay, look at that. And I believe it's the first time in 15 oh, I'm gonna get years you guys. that, uh, and one that stands out in particular is the <laughs> smiling face of Diane Mahan uh, <laughs> back there, right next to Jack Hurd. But thank you very much. When that, This was very recently done, or did I miss it at the last meeting? Did I? <laughs> uh, thank you very much. No, I appreciate no, you it. Didn't miss it. This uh, was the first. Fantastic. Thanks. And the second thing is, uh, we have two superb candidates up for election on the board of selectmen this Saturday. Uh, and just to remind people, it is election day. And please remember to get out to the polls uh, from eight to eight on Saturday. Uh, no matter what your choice is for candidates, it's very important to get people to the polls. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, just two things, as the manager said, it is allegedly spring, um, I, and I know during this cumbersome winter, um, we've all gotten many, many comments, positive comments in terms of DPW and the Herculean efforts that um, they have gone through as well as clearing snow and, and whatnot. So I, I just would leave it to the manager at whatever appropriate time, at whatever appropriate venue. Um, if we could somehow, um, or, you know, whatever you see fit and or any assistance um, from any of the board members that you might need um, would be willing to provide it. But this really was a very unique year. Um, and with only nine snow fighters, as well as all the subcontractors that we had, but really it's those nine snow fighters and you know, what that DPW crew did, um, I, I know we were all appreciative. So I, I'll leave that in your court. And then the second thing is just sort of an FYI, um, uh, spurned on from the uh, students from the high school that came before us with the parking issues, um, as well as um, I know Rob DiLoretto who gives out the um, employee parking stickers. 
also says that there is a need. Um, I have had conversations with the town manager about 15 years ago when we did over the Warren A. Pierce field and you did the turf and the lights and the school board and whatnot. We had a group of consultants that also came in and came up with four plans of the parking lot as you enter on Mill Street that has that crazy rotary. And I happen to also speak to Rick Ionelli, who's director of transportation on the school side, and I may have his title wrong. Um, he also was included at that meeting, and he br brought to my attention that there were four plans that the, the then developer came up with, um, that for whatever reason we didn't move forward. He said to me, when he looked at it, plan four, or plan D, um, and I've asked the manager to go on a scavenger hunt as well as take my picture down, put it on the scavenger hunt. Um, to, to, um, that plan must exist somewhere, and what he said it would do is it would create 60 new parking spaces, which would include um, allowing all of the school buses to be parked in that area, um, because I know it's really tight down the DPW yard, and we've been trying to, a way for years to try to, you know, find a place for the buses and, and give some of that back, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, Mike Rademacher would be appreciative if we could, some. That's true. It's, it's sort of been a lot, so I just want to make sure this board, um, so also recognizing you have to have conversations um, with the superintendent, as well as when we get to that point, I would assume the current chair or future chair would also have discussion with his or her counterpart um, over at the school committee. Um, but just on that side, you know, there are plans that already exist, and if we can really look at it, and maybe it's a joint effort between town and school funds, or maybe it's largely just school funds because it's an issue that they've asked um, for us um, to look at. So I just want to make sure everyone's aware of that. So if it does come up, we're all up to speed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you very much. Jim. Uh, Joe, are you going to talk about the AEF? Here. Uh, oh. All right, uh, so on Sunday, yesterday, uh, Steve and Joe and I represented this board at the Arlington Education Foundation Trivia Bee. Thank you. Uh, and Joe provided the costumes. We showed up in camouflage, believe it or not, with letters on the back that said BOS, as if it's sort of like FBI or just something like that. On Unfortunately, the Dan's O fell off. Yeah. <laughs> you lost your O? Yeah. Which left, uh, BS. Yeah. <laughs> BS. <laughs> And uh, we did what in my mind was absolutely perfect, which was to come in second in the first round, which <laughs> means it was very respectable, and you can leave before the final. <laughs> <laughs> the final was hotly contested and went on, I understand, quite the way it's in. Yeah, yeah. And um, so anyway, I was happy to support the AEF, and it really is a very, very fun event. Um, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, firstly, Mr. Chair, I'm cognizant this is your last last meeting with the uh, with the gavel, and I want to thank you for all of your services. Thank you I think you you've much. done outstanding job, especially with these warrant article hearings. We've had a relatively calm year, and I think we're <laughs> I think we're reaping the fruits of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank thank you um, for a great year. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, some of our staff and some of our other departments, uh, some of their efforts over this past month and, and weekend. I know that Ms. Mahan, Mr. Chaplin and I were down at the Guns and Hoses uh, game on on, uh, on Friday, raises money for autism, and um, brought my daughter, and she was very understanding when I said we cannot go sit down because that implies taking a side. <laughs> so um, <laughs> congratulations to our fire and police <laughs> officers who all, um, who all um, you know, competed very, very wonderfully. And, and uh, do you have any idea how much they raised on that? They must have raised no, a lot. Me. There were a lot of people came, a lot of people in there. So um, I also wanted to um, note this is a busy month for our um, library. We're just finishing up uh, the month of March with the town read. Uh, my, my sister lives on the mantelpiece. And uh, the, the library, um, Ms. Nicolay and her staff have done a great job of using this book um, with other community organizations as a springboard for important conversations. I know they've worked with um, the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group on um, you know, discussions around discrimination and racism, which is a theme in the book. They, they did an event with the, um, the uh, Youth Health and Safety Coalition on the effects of um, alcoholism on children growing up in, in families um, uh, with that. And I know I was able to attend um, this 
past Saturday, they actually hosted an author event where they Skyped to the UK with the author. And ironically, somebody pointed out, you know, the community room where the screen is, that the author was on the mantelpiece and they pointed that <laughs> It wasn't on purpose, but they pointed that out to her. And I, I think that Ms. Nicolay was gonna send her a picture because it was quite humorous. Um, also, um, on fri Friday, I think Mr. Chapdelaine and I and Mr. Tosti were over at the MMA legislative uh, breakfast. Those are always very good conversations with our legislative delegation, some of the other uh, local officials. One of the things that was discussed a bit was that while some of the initial news, and, uh, and you can correct me if, if, if I'm misstating anything, Adam, but um, some of the initial news around uh, local aid figures has seemed good on the face of it. There are a number of areas where there have been um, proposed cuts in the governor's budgets. Um, if, if the governor's budget holds right now, for example, our schools will potentially lose their kindergarten grant. Um, there are potentially, I think, negative impacts on circuit breaker reimbursements for special education, um, which wouldn't have an immediate effect in Ireland because the way the budgeting was done, it would have an effect next year if that, if that were to hold um, METCO and some other areas. So um, it was a good opportunity to get a clearer picture of what the potential impacts are on Arlington. Where, well, we have a lot of good news, I think, on, on the, the UGA and on the, um, you know, the pothole assistance and such. It, there are some, some other uh, areas that, that where the news is not potentially not so good and we'll have to keep our eyes um, open. Uh, a lot of that impact hits across the street um, with the schools. And the, the last thing I wanted to uh, just um, remind you all of, I see Mr. Grilly has his white ribbon on and uh, somebody else, somebody else walked in here. With Adam. Him. Oh, Adam has his, on. good, good, very good. Um, wanted to remind folks, um, I, um, I think when Ms. Shea came in for our resolution around White Ribbon Day, she noted that she was working on putting together an event and a community conversation. And that's gonna take place um, this Thursday in the Lions hearing room from seven to 8.30. Um, uh, I'm working with her on it, but uh, First Step Domestic Violence Program is working on it. Craig uh, Norbert Baum from the Men's Initiative for Jane Doe um, will be coming out. Um, there'll be a, um, a video presentation followed by a community discussion. I know the police are planning to send some, some folks as, as well uh, to participate. Um, I, I encourage everyone, especially men, but, but it's really, it's open to everyone to come on out. And I, I did wanna note, we got one email from um, a resident who saw the town uh, announcement and he was disturbed that the, the word fight was used in the, in the subject, the fight against domestic violence. And he felt that it, um, it implied or might convey the theme of using violence to counter violence. Um, I don't want to say that this is well taken. I take responsibility for the wording because I did the draft of that and I think it's spot on for what will be discussed on Thursday night because a lot of what will be discussed is the way language has been contorted over time to take men out of the picture um, on domestic violence. So I, I actually appreciate this correspondence and I think it's a good springboard for the conversation. So thank you very much. Sorry Thank you. A while. No, that's a busy week. Yeah. Um, so, um, yes, AEF was a blast uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, seeing how that event's grown, it's um, really amazing. Um, but I guess the only comment um, otherwise I have is, I guess it could be a follow-up to Ms. Mahan's, um, and that I th we all do recognize um, the stellar work that DPW did um, over the past few months. But now moving forward, I think it's time for you know, all the residents to help them out. Um, with all the snow melting, um, you know, I think we're go we've seen and are gonna continue to see an increase in litter on the ground, um, an increase in people who may have forgot to pick up after their dogs um, you know, in the cold weather. And I really think that um, you know, starting now, um, I think we should all, um, everyone in town, be cognizant of that and um, do whatever you can to you know, pick up um, whatever you see on the ground and it, it will go a long way. And it, um, that is um, something that it, it's kind of been driving me nuts lately. And, um, <laughs> I, I and so I think uh, that's something we can all pay a little bit more attention to and we'll have um, Arlington back to um, the cleanliness it was before the winter um, in the very near future. So thank you very much and that's all my new Mr. business. John? Second.
Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.